Okay, hello everyone. Let's uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Talama Harry. I'm the director for the Smart HQ service program at uh, GE Appliances. So thank you for attending this training session today. So we are going to be uh, focused on uh, data uh, today. So we're going to be focused on uh, accessing data. Uh, sharing data. Um, you know, I think you all know that Smart HQ service is all about access to GE's data infrastructure. And so, um, uh, we're going to go through all the details of the capabilities of the tool that allow you to share data with GE, uh, technical assistance group, share data with other people within your organization. And just leverage uh, the the really powerful uh, data sharing and data communication tools that exist within Smart HQ service. So let me. So it's going to be a combination of presentation and uh, demo. And uh, so I'm going to start with uh, some presentation. First, actually, I, I'm going to introduce uh, the team. So first, I, I want to uh, bring Anitha in to say hello. So there's Anitha. Anitha is at uh, Appliance Park uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and uh, she's uh, she's working out of the lab. Um, uh, I'm actually working from home, so uh, as you might be able to tell from from uh, the background. And then we have uh, Tim Burdick. Uh, Tim Burdick is actually in, in Arizona. He's uh, he's working from home as well. Okay, so uh, so uh, as we go through the presentation, uh, 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 later on, Tim is going to get involved and do some uh, presentation related to uh, using cycle history to troubleshoot uh, issues on GE dishwashers. So let me go get started with the presentation. Okay, so so let's get started. So what is uh, what is Smart HQ Service, right? So Smart HQ Service, uh, as I think many of you know at this point, uh, is an effort that GE has made to uh, essentially make uh, uh, aggregate all the digital tools uh, that have been developed over the years, uh, mostly targeted at use for GE factory service, but aggregate these tools and make them available for you as uh, authorized GE services to use to make your job much easier uh, to service in terms of servicing GE product. So SmartHQ service is a collection of really, really powerful digital tools that you can use to service uh, GE appliances. And it's only in the last two, couple of years that we've actually started to make these tools available to our uh, customer care network or uh, authorized GE servicer network. Okay. So let's go to the next screen. So um, so this is just an agenda of what we're going to go through in this uh, training. So um, the first, we're going to do a, a quick overview of the Smart HQ service uh, architecture or, or sort of design. Um, uh, then we're going to go through um, faults and um, alerts. And then we're going to go through uh, cycle history. Uh, you'll see the cycle history and, uh, and, and fault codes are actually very, very closely intertwined in terms of how they work together. Uh, and then we're going to talk about diagnostic history. Diagnostic history is the feature that allows you to look back at previous sessions. So, um, whenever you do a troubleshooting session with uh, Smart HQ service, all the data that you capture is sent up to the cloud. So whether it's alerts, fault codes, cycle history, which is a, a data logger, um, photographs that you take is sent up to the cloud and is stored in the cloud. And you can go to uh, diagnostic history and you can pull up uh, this data. Okay, It's all in the cloud. Go to the next. 
Uh, shared data, shared data is slightly different. Shared data is the ability to uh, take um, history files that are actually stored on your local device and email those history files to another uh, individual. So it might be someone else that is um, within your company that uses Smart HQ service, or it might be um, uh, it might be uh, GE's technical assistance group, um, or it might be you know um, uh, the main thing is that the the person has to have uh, GE uh, uh, has to have Smart HQ service. Okay, so. Um, all right, so let, let's go to the next screen. Uh, oh, and uh, sorry, I, I didn't mention, we're also going to be talking about um, real-time chat and uh, and video conferencing, okay? So let, let's go to the next screen. Okay, so uh, so Smart HQ service is uh, kind of, um, it, it's, it's broken up into two types of capability. Um, one is the cloud-oriented features. So these are the um, things like the access to documents, um, access to uh, um, uh, data that's in the cloud, access to our uh, exploded drawing viewing application, uh, the ability to buy parts through the system. This is all. These are all cloud-oriented features. Okay, um, to go forward. The other sort of uh, half of the features are the features that allow you to actually communicate with the appliance. So this is done over Bluetooth. And this is um, uh, what you, you use this Bluetooth module to do where you plug the Bluetooth module into an ethernet port that is uh, built into many, many GE appliances. So it, since approximately 2000, 2012, we've been building this capability into GE appliances, into washers, dryers, dishwashers, um, you name it, wall ovens. And the, this module and allows the appliance to communicate wirelessly with uh, an app that runs on Android or iOS phones or tablets. Okay. And so the way that we like to think about this is that in the old days, the uh, appliance was kind of a black box, right? And, you know, as we've been putting all this electronics into it, they, you know, it started to get to the point where um, it was very difficult to, to figure out how to, to, to fix these appliances because you just didn't know what was going on inside, right? So what we've done is this tool allows you to talk to the appliance, allows you to interact with the appliance, allows you to communicate with the appliance and um, essentially probe the appliance for information about what might be going on and what might be going wrong with the appliance. So, um, you know, the, the Bluetooth communication is one piece, and then the cloud interaction is another piece, which gives you access to documents, exploded drawings, the ability to buy parts, all this, all this great, great capabilities. Let's go to the next screen. Okay, so now we're gonna start talking a little bit more technical, start getting into a little bit more of the details of the data aspects of things that uh, the, that we're here to talk about, okay? So, um, so we know we have alerts and we have fault codes. Alerts and fault codes are similar but different, okay? So um, fault codes I think we're all very familiar with, um, which is essentially the appliance doing self-diagnostics, uh, generating uh, uh, information about any faults that's going on within the appliance, in, a, in, a, in the form of fault codes. When you interface with the appliance with Smart HQ service, uh, the, those fault codes are captured and mated with information about how to resolve those fault codes, okay? Alerts are a little different. Alerts are the app probing the appliance for certain, uh, for certain conditions. Um, so first, the, the app looks for the model number and the serial number. And then it looks at, at certain parameters within the appliance and uh, identifies issues that are going on with the appliance. So you can think of alerts as almost like a digital bulletin, uh, a real-time digital bulletin that is specific to the appliance that you are 
interacting with, the appliance that, that you, are, um, you are working with, okay? Okay, so, um, so let's talk a little bit about fault codes, okay? So what I've done here is I have a uh, sort of a selection of fault codes that were actually fault codes that were generated in the refrigerator that I have at, at home, okay? And um, there are some issues going on with, with this particular refrigerator. Um, the fresh food side it, um, uh, appears to have been having some problems uh, cooling. Um, it seems to be having some problems holding temperature. So, so these are some of the fault codes that, uh, that I saw in, in this particular refrigerator, okay? So first of all, it says uh, fresh food evap abnormal defrost. So what this means is that the defrost was taking longer than expected. This is the, uh, the top left box here. Uh, this is fault code F203. So it is active. It's happened 12 times um, and it started happening 157 days ago, okay? So this is an ongoing issue. Um, so the defrost completed, but it took longer than expected, and this is called an abnormal defrost. So you go down the screen here, um, uh, F code 201, uh, this says that the, the, there was actually a fresh food evaporative uh, defrost error. So this means that the defrost actually didn't even, didn't complete. So the thermistor on the uh, um, on the evaporator, the fresh food evaporator, did not reach the terminal temperature. It did not reach the, ter the temperature uh, to uh, to end the, the defrost, and it timed out. Okay, and this has happened a few times. This this first time this happened was 19 days ago. Okay, so what this says is that there's some there's an issue going on with the evaporator. Um, and the defrost uh, of this refrigerator, and it's getting progressively worse, okay? And we'll look at some cycle history data in a minute that um, reinforces this notion that there's something going on with the, with the uh, uh, fresh food uh, evaporator defrost, okay? So uh, as I go down the screen, this is just some more examples of some, some fault codes you might see, okay? So um, fresh food door open for 15 minutes or more. So there's nothing wrong with the uh, refrigerator necessarily. This is just an informational telling the technician that, you know, um, the door has been left open uh, multiple times. So it says 19 times, um, you know, over the uh, certain period of time. Okay. And then in the top right hand side, it says the uh, top right hand box, it says, uh, fresh food open for 60 minutes total in the last 24 hours. So, you know, uh, I need to do a better job of keeping my refrigerator door closed, right? So, so that's, uh, so this is great information that you can use when interacting with consumers. You can tell them, hey, it looks like you know, you're having a problem with leaving your uh, refrigerator door open or maybe your freezer door open. And, uh, you know, this is just something you should be aware of. Maybe it's your kids. Uh, who knows? But, uh, um, you're, you know, you're leaving, you're la you're leaving your, your, your freezer door, your fresh food door open. Okay. Um, and then uh, I've got a couple more uh, errors here. One says, um, so uh, ice maker senses bucket full even after ice dispense. So what this is is really saying is that there's clumping of ice in the ice bucket. So um, even though, so, you know, maybe there's a sheet of ice at, at the top, so it's fooling the sensor. And even though the uh, bucket isn't completely full, the the sensor thinks that the bucket is full. So So that's an indication of clumping ice. Um, and then ice box fan uh, uh, feedback missing. So maybe there's an interruption that is stopping the, the fan from rotating uh, at the expected uh, frequency or speed. And uh, so that's, uh, that's an error uh, that's uh, just uh, making the technician aware of that. Okay. So let's uh, go to the next screen. 
Yeah, one second. Okay, so so this is um, an example of an of an alert. Okay, so as I said before, alerts are different. Okay, alerts are. I like to think of it a little bit like uh, it's um, uh, artificial intelligence, right? It's the app probing the appliance and looking for certain parameters, looking for certain conditions, uh, so that it can make the technician aware of what is wrong and what is going on and what they need to focus on, okay? So um, so in this particular alert was related to a problem that we were seeing when uh, on certain serial num uh, numbers of certain models of, of refrigerators where um, the firmware update process was failing. And it turns out that there was a component, um, uh, a redundant component on one of the uh, PCBs or one of the, the electronic boards in this unit that was causing the problem. So um, what the technician needed to do and what this instruction tells the technician is to remove that diode. And it gives them instructions. And there's actually a video uh, that gives them instructions on that they need to remove that uh, that diode. Okay, so. Okay, so so now uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, going a little bit more detail about cycle history. Cycle history is a little bit mysterious, um, but it's a really really powerful tool, right? As I said before, it's a data logger. It's a data logger inside the appliance. And with any data logger, there's got to be a timeline, right? So, um, so, so there's got to be a. Can you go go forward? Okay. So there's got to be a timeline, okay? So, um, so the if you look at the on the at the top, um, you'll see uh, the. So each each one of those. So when you see uh, zero days and one hour. That is the most recent cycle. So it's a compressor on, compressor off cycle. As you go to the right, you see um, older and older cycles. Okay. Now, this particular situation, uh, there are, you know, I just did a screenshot of just 13 cycles. But under normal circumstances, you'll see about 140 cycles. And that's about depending on the, on the length of the cycles, that could be as much as a week and a half of data, okay? So essentially, you know how this appliance has been behaving for uh, over a week before you even entered the home, okay? Now, the cycle index is simply a count of the number of cycles, right? So um, cycle 16608 is the most recent cycle, okay? And uh, that means that this appliance has done 16,608 uh, 16, compressor cycles, okay? So, um, so just in looking at that, you can kind of see quite a lot of information about, you know, about the, the operation of, of this appliance, okay? So next, um, you can see uh, data about the uh, three-way valve position, okay? So um, the last three-way valve, uh, um, the, for, the la for the last cycle, the three-way valve spent 13 minutes satisfying the fresh food and freezer and uh, 17 minutes satisfying just the freezer, okay? So, so this is, you know where, how the three-way valve has been behaving and how it's, um, how much time it's spending uh, satisfying the freezer versus the fresh food in the freezer, okay? And then if you go down the list, you'll see um, compressor on time, okay? Now, in this case, we had some pretty long, pretty long compressor on time. So two hours, 49 minutes, and seven hours, nine minutes, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, so these are, these are pretty long compressor. So what that means is that the compressor is taking all, you know, it's, it's working really hard to keep this unit cool, right? So, um, so probably something going on there. And then you can see the compressor off time as well, okay? So let's, let's go to the next. Okay, so, um, 
So this is uh, essentially data associated, temperature data associated with the fresh food compartment. And you will see that, um, you will see that the, the refrigerator, the uh, fresh food section had two back-to-back -back defrosts, right? So two cycles back-to-back -back where there were defrosts. And <clears throat> that, that's not what you would expect, right? Um, the defrosts are expected to be uh, spread out, you know, maybe once every 12 hours or something like that. Um, this is, this is defrosting, uh, uh, back to back. So, so this, this probably indicates that there was an, an abnormal defrost. So if you go to, to go forward, you'll see that, um, this, there, there were error codes that indicated that there was an abnormal defrost, right? So there were two error codes. Um, one that uh, indicated that it was there was a, a, a defrost error, so the defrost never completed, and the other that indicated that um, uh, there were multiple uh, long defrosts that took longer than expected. Okay, okay. So let's now. This is just. Uh, um, a freezer temperature cycle, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, data about the freezer temperature. And you can see that the freezer actually, um, now you see that there was a defrost for 18 minutes, which is very normal for the freezer. And so it looks like the freezer is actually uh, uh, maintaining temperature uh, quite well. Um, but uh, obviously we have an issue going on on the fresh food side. Okay. So let's go to the next. Okay. So uh, door openings. Okay. So uh, this is uh, data that uh, shows that uh, the door was left open for 19 minutes. Uh, the fresh food door was left open for 19 minutes. So in the cycle of history data, you can go on and see that uh, the consumer has left their fresh food door open or their freezer door open. So if they're complaining about frost buildup or they're complaining about uh, 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 poor cooling, uh, you can look at historical data and you can show them that they are, uh, they are leaving their door open and that is probably affecting the performance of their, uh, their refrigerator. Okay, uh, so go forward. So um, ice maker cycles. Well, uh, this is just showing you uh, that in this in one particular cycle here, there were six ice harvests. Right. So this was a very long cycle. There were six ha uh, ice harvests. You can see that um, the target ice box temperature was minus twenty. Was sorry, minus two degrees Fahrenheit, but um, it actually only, the ice block actually only reached four degrees Fahrenheit, which would lead you to believe that the fresh food compartment is having a, a, a hard time keeping up with the cooling and, and is not um, cooling to the degree that you might expect. Okay. So here we have a, a couple of error codes that reinforce the information that's being seen in cycle history, right? So fresh food door open for 15 minutes, uh, fresh food door open for 60 minutes total in the last 24 hours, okay? So this is how um, fault codes, okay, and cycle history can kind of work together to give you a full understanding and give you a full picture of what is going on. Okay, so of course, um, cycle history doesn't just apply to refrigerators, right? You can get great data, great information uh, from cycle history uh, for washers as well, or dishwashers, or, or, or many GE appliances. So at, at the top, you will see um, it has exactly the same timeline uh, same uh, in cy cycle number or cycle index, okay? And it has the same days ago information, right? 
Um, now, a cycle on a dishwasher, on a washer, is very different from a cycle on a uh, on a refrigerator, right? So, um, obviously, a refrigerator is continuously running uh, uh, machine, so the cycle is completely different. On a washer, uh, a cycle is every time you run a wash cycle. Okay, so you get information on on how that each one of these wash cycles went. So, for example, um, we have here uh, a couple of situations where the wash cycle did not complete. Now, what does that mean? Maybe the consumer interrupted the wash cycle. Um, it could also have uh, not completed because of some kind of error condition, like an out of balance. But that's not the case uh, here. Okay. Um, it also shows you how much um, water was in the tub at the end of the um, wash cycle. So these wash cycles that didn't complete, you can see that the, it, the cycle ended with water in the, in the tub, okay? Okay, so there's a lot of useful information. Um, uh, for example, door openings. So uh, if the consumer opens the door during the use of the washer, uh, it will show. And um, so in, th in this case, uh, there was just, um, it looks like uh, uh, we're opening the, the door of the washer while uh, we're washing quite frequently. Uh, it's probably not a good practice, but it um, seems like that's going on. And then um, you can check to see, is the uh, washer getting up to the correct spin cycle during this the during the spin spin operation, okay. Okay, so let me. Uh, so so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, demo uh, cycle history and, and fault codes. Uh, so I'm going to switch to another screen. Okay. Okay, so I've got two devices on here to demo with. Okay, so um, so you can see that uh, this uh, the the iPad on the left is connected to a GE uh, refrigerator, a GFE uh, twenty seven. Okay. You can see that there is an alert in, uh, that has occurred in this machine, uh, in this uh, refrigerator. And it, and it says it's uh, um, uh, RJ45 TVS diode presence. So that's just indicating what that, what that problem is, okay? Because the issue is related to a specific diode uh, that is a redundant component and that is causing problems in the uh, uh, in the operation uh, during a firmware update process, so this issue is if you if you're doing a firmware update on this model of uh, refrigerator uh, that falls into a certain series, a certain date of production, uh, there is some pre-processing that you have to perform on the washer, uh, to, sorry, on the refrigerator to be able to do a firmware update. So there's actually a video associate, a, attached to this that shows uh, exactly, gives exactly instructions for what you have to do to successfully perform a firmware update. So that was uh, alerts. You can also see uh, fault codes, of course. If I press on the right uh, hand side here, uh, I will see uh, all these fault codes uh, that, have, that have occurred. I can clear fault codes. If I choose to, <clears throat> I don't want to clear the fault codes here, but I can clear uh, my fault codes. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to um, cycle history and uh, click on cycle history. Okay. And uh, you can see, um, and it's kind of important to, to realize, there's a lot more data here than I was showing on my PowerPoint presentation, right? So 140 parameters of data, a lot of data, okay? So you know 
uh, how this uh, refrigerator has been behaving long before you got into the home. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, some of the things I've already shown you, you know, um, door openings, defrost, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna graph a couple of parameters. Now, when you see this blue uh, line at the uh, edge on the left-hand side, that means that parameter is graphable. It means you can graph that parameter, okay? So I'm gonna graph uh, fresh food maximum temperature. So I just, uh, you see there uh, on the right, I can add it to the graph. And it says added. Um, let me do uh, fresh food, uh, freezer maximum temperature. I add it to the graph. Uh, you see on the right hand side there, it says added. And I'm going to do compressor on time. I add that to the graph. And then I graph it. Okay. And, and you can see, you can see the, the graph. Okay. So this can be very powerful. It can help you. It can help you figure out a lot of problems that you may, uh, otherwise, uh, never be able to, to figure out. Okay. So, um, so I think that's what I wanted to show you on, uh, cycle history. So let me go back to the, uh, presentation. Okay. So, um, so the next thing we're going to show you is um, diagnostic history. Okay. So, diagnostic history is related to, in some ways, to fault codes, cycle history, alerts, um, and there's another component which is photo up, uh, photo upload. But um, the main point of this is to understand that you can retrieve data that. Uh, that was created or was extracted from the appliance at during a previous service call. Okay. So for example, uh, in this case, uh, go forward. Okay. So for example, in this case, um, I'm looking for a, uh, uh, I want to look at all my data for the last month for this particular refrigerator and this particular serial number. And, uh, and I click on, on, uh, the month and, uh, click on search and it will, it will, uh, list all those, uh, all those sessions that I've executed. Okay. And then I can look at, uh, cycle history. Like I said, uh, all this data, uh, alerts, fault codes, uh, photographs. If I've taken photographs and uploaded them, I can look at that data. I'll, I'll demo this in a minute here. And then you can email, you can email to someone that you want also to look at this information, right? So, um, very often it's going to be GE's, uh, technical assistance group. Um, and it actually, the email actually auto populates the email to GE's technical assistance group. But what will happen is that they, GE's, um, uh, tag or technical assistance group can look, um, Based on the serial number, model number, session ID in this email, they can look for your session and look at the data um, that you need them to look at, so that they can they can help you. Okay. Okay. So so now I'm going to I'm going to uh, demo that a little bit. Okay. So um, so so. First thing you do is go to click on uh, diagnostic history. Okay, and just like I did before, this time I'm going to, I'm not going to search for this particular model, even though um, that is actually the, the session I'm going to pick. Um, and I'm going to look for data for the last month. I click uh, month and I click search. And it pulls up a bunch of data. Okay. So lots of, lots of data here. And, um, I'm going to look at, uh, my most recent session on February the 25th. Okay. And click on that. 
And I'll see that I, this, this is all the data that I can look at. I can look at my fault codes. It takes a second to pull up. So my fault codes. <clears throat> so these are my fault codes that were in the machine when I worked on it. Okay. Cycle history. So this is the cycle history data that was in the machine when I worked on it. Uh, diagnostic photos. If I had taken some photos and uploaded them, uh, I can I can see them right here. Okay. <clears throat> So, so that is, um, that is diagnostic history. So it's about, it's all about being able to look at historic data, sh review that data, share that data with someone else. Okay. And that's one way to do it. We actually have two ways to do it, to do, to achieve that. Okay. The other way to do it is through shared data. And, uh, <clears throat> let me go back to the presentation quickly. So, so shared data, um, <clears throat> essentially, uh, every time you, you run a session, a troubleshooting session, uh, all the critical data files for that session are stored locally on your device in it, what we call a history file. And you can email that history file to someone else, uh, anyone else that has Smart HQ service, okay? And they can open the the um, the history file, and they can view your data. Okay, so um, once again, it's a it's a good way to commun communicate with uh, GE's technical assistance group. Okay, and um, it's also a good way to commun to communicate data within your organization, right? So within your company, you might want uh, your technicians. You might have a technician out in the field who's uh, maybe not so experienced using smart HQ service, and you may have someone <clears throat> someone uh, uh, in the office or in the back office or uh, in, in the workshop that is more experienced, uh, and they can look at the data that your technician out in the field is seeing. So let me, let me uh, demo that quickly. So, uh, <clears throat> So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to close this, open this, okay, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to share data, and I'm going to pick a file, okay, and I'm going to email that file, and I'm not going to email it to tag. I'm going to email it to myself. And if we're lucky and the network is good, you will see that email show up on my other device here. I take a couple of seconds here. There it is. So I click on that. Okay, and I open this file. Takes a couple of seconds here. But what it's doing is it's opening that history file in Smart HQ service. So so it's 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 going to be for the person who received the file. It's going to be as if they were right there with you, standing over your shoulder, and was seeing exactly the same thing that you're seeing. So so this is all the data. So this was uh, the the uh, data I sent was for a for a, a washer. 
And uh, if I go to cycle history, it's uh, it's right there. Okay. So um, so so that's that. Uh, so let me go back to, to the presentation. Okay, so um, we're getting, kind of getting towards the end here. A uh, couple of more things we wanted to show. So, so this is actually um, a capability that we just recently added. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's not so much of a, a data feature. It's really more uh, a, a way for you to communicate with my team, right? So we try to provide as much support and we try to help um, folks who are using Smart HQ service as much as possible. And so what we've done is we've uh, implemented this chat feature and you'll see a little chat uh, button at the bottom right hand side of the screen. Every time you move from screen to screen, it stays on the screen for about 20 seconds. And if you click on that, it will ask you for name, um, uh, email address, and phone number, optionally phone number. And then um, you can start chatting uh, and you can chat with um, someone on my team, okay? So I'm gonna show you uh, a demo of that uh, right now. Uh, so, um, so let me go to the next screen, okay? And I click on the chat. Okay, mine auto-populates with my name and uh, email address because I've done this before. I'm gonna start chatting. Okay, and someone from my team will answer, probably be Anitha because she knows I'm, okay. So Anitha has answered, she said hello, and I said uh, hi, uh, just testing. Okay, and I send that, okay. So um, we encourage you to use this. It's a it's a great way uh, to communicate um, with uh, with my team. Okay. Um, all right. So let me. Uh, there's one last thing that I wanted to show. This is is a uh, a way for you to uh, communicate with GE the, the GE Technical Assistance Group. Okay. Um, it's a, um, a, a video uh, conferencing. It's a, a, a way for you to share the screen of your phone with the uh, technical assistance group at GE so that they can see the data that you're seeing in real time. Uh, you can also do screen uh, video screen sharing. So let me send, I'm, I'm gonna send a text to Anitha. And in a minute here, you'll see uh, the screen of Anitha's phone. Okay, there you go. So, uh, so this is cycle history. So she's connected to a washer. Okay, so this is another way to, another way to share data. Okay. Um, I can also, um, I, I wanna see what Anitha's seeing in terms of the appliance or in terms of her environment. Uh, so, so I want a, a video feed from Anitha's camera. So I'm gonna request that. Okay, so so this is Anita's camera. It's what she's seeing in the lab, right? So this is a great way if you're running into if you if you're struggling with explaining something um, to the GE Technical Assistance Group. Uh, this is one way to facilitate communication to show them what it is you're seeing, uh, so that they can help you uh, solve problems more easily. Okay. Okay, so so I think in terms of uh, of demo, 
that was pretty much um, what I wanted to show you. Um, now, uh, we're going to go to Tim Burdick, uh, and he's going to show you a real-world uh, usage of some of the tools, uh, some of the data tools that are available uh, in SmartHQ service. Okay, good. All right. So what we're going to look at here real quick, guys and girls, is we got a dishwasher that was reported at not giving proper drying uh, as, a, as a heat, possible heat issue. So as we pull up here and we see, first off, based on everything that we've all, we've all heard today and we've listened to so far, we can see that there is an error code, actually two error codes, that relate to a heat issue. We got a absent heat source and a temperature sensor low. So what we're gonna look at real quick is we're gonna pull those up, take a look at those, and it's gonna show us exactly what we need to check and where we need to check. So as a technician, that's vital for me. That is giving me information right off the bat that I can look at and know what I have to go check. But before we get there, what we're going to go is we're going to hit next here. And I want to see, just like the previous examples, I want to see how this machine was functioning before I even got in the house. We saw that the error code was already inactive, which means as a technician, I'm already thinking that maybe I got a loose wire connection or maybe I got an issue with the board that is fluctuating power. Something's going on. So I want to see, looking here, at the information on the cycle history, I want to see exactly what's going on. So we're going to look at the expected wash temperature and make sure that it all lines up for the last five, six cycles is what this unit holds. Sure enough, it looks all good. So now let's add that to the graph just to make sure that we're not missing anything. And yes, we can see the last five cycles, the expected temperature and the actual temperature did line up. So that confirms that I have an intermittent issue. So what I would do then as a technician is I would go to diagnostic test. I would enter that service mode and we hear my drain pump kick on and we see that there's a heater test. So we can run through that test and we can look at all this data. We see the drain pump is actually running and it's trying to get all the water out, but the drain pump would run, the water valve would kick on, circulation pump would go, the heater would then kick on. If you look at the bottom of the phone screen there, I could then visually see the fact that the heater was working or not working. I could see that temperature start to rise. So I'm gonna do kind of the same thing real quick for you. I'm not going to uh, run the whole test because that takes 15 minutes to do roughly and we don't have that time. But I wanna show you the functionality by moving back and going to operate loads. I can do the same concept, the same exact thing, but with my individual components. So I wanna make sure that I got a little bit of water in there and now this is how I'm going to take that data that we saw in that graph. And I'm going to make sure that everything is functioning the way that it's supposed to function. We can kind of see water coming in there a little bit. And once I get some water, I'm just going to hit the circulation pump just to make sure that all runs. And so you don't, see, you don't just get the data aspect of it, but you're also getting the functionality of running the cycle, running the unit, and making sure that the components are working properly without having to memorize button codes and a variety of different button codes to get in. So that should be good on the water. Let's hit the circulation pump just to make sure. And at that point, I could then hit the heater and verify that my heater is coming on with my meter. So we see we got good water pressure, good water flow going. So if I, were to scroll, if I were to keep that running and scroll back to the top, I could turn that heater on and run that heater so I didn't damage any of the plastic pieces inside or the tub or uh, any leftover silverware 
that might be in there. But I can run that information. I can use that data that we're getting. And I can also see it on the three little bars at the top. We can see the temperature range right there. So then as it's running, I could still verify my temperature actually rising. So again, I could watch the water pressure. I could see the turbidity. I could see what cycle it's on. And this is giving me all the data that I need as a technician to make the best possible accurate diagnosis that I can, which is going to give me a better reputation with the customer and instill confidence within the customer that I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm doing. So we all know as technicians, it is about data. How much information can I get on that machine before I even get there from the consumer? How much information do I know about the machine before I even get there on how to tear it apart, what to look for? And then I can look at all of that information and go back and then I can say, yes, sure enough, I did have an intermittent heat issue. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up my mini manual and now I can start looking at my heater. I can start looking at those test points, making sure my heater is within range, with, make sure it ohms out properly and has the proper voltage. So as a technician, I now have this as a tool in my belt with all of the information on the unit before I get there. And it allows me to make a proper diagnosis of the unit. We have learned today all of the aspects and features as far as data goes when it comes to the Smart HQ uh, application and the device and all the different things to look for and different ranges that it has that we can graph it, we can see it. And that is a very valuable tool as a technician. And I can't tell you enough from being out on the field and using it personally, how many times this has proven itself time and time again and to give me the best accurate diagnosis and make my first time complete ratio go up. And that is why I believe in it. And that is why I joined this team. And I'm excited that you guys have the opportunity to learn more about it and to take it and use it and see it for yourself. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah. As, as I will say, Tim, uh, Tim has a lot of real world experience uh, as a, a business owner uh, in, in, in the service industry, appliance service industry. And, um, you know, he, uh, I think, is a, a going to be a great asset to our team uh, in terms of helping us uh, uh, interact and communicate um, the capabilities of Smart HQ service to uh, technicians uh, out in the field. So thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Tim. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the presentation Okay, and uh, we will just uh, wrap things up quickly. So, um, so first, I just want to tell you that I mean we do have a website. Uh, I think you're probably all uh, fairly familiar with it, but uh, anything you go go to the website quickly. So, so this is a website it has a lot of great information. Um, this is most of you, I think, who are watching this actually uh, uh, are accessing it through the virtual training tab on our website. But we have uh, uh, training material. Um, if you go to uh, virtual training, uh, we post, uh, so you can see this virtual training going on right now, but um, we post um, all the previous training, uh, virtual training sessions um, uh, on our website. And um, if, you, uh, if you go to, sorry, go back to training videos again. So um, just a lot of, of all kinds of different training material, uh, some very short videos that just focus on, on so, so a series that we call smart snippets uh, that just focuses on very specific areas of functionality and just gives you uh, general information about just something very specific. And then we go into in, in other videos into more detail uh, about different aspects of, of uh, smart HQ service tool. Okay, so and then um, we have a we have a Facebook page, 
um, that we use to distribute information. So, so that's uh, can uh, be pretty valuable uh, in terms of learning about what we're doing and what's going on. Um, and then uh, we also have a YouTube page, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, that uh, where we put a lot of, of really, really useful information. Okay, so um, so so that's uh, that's that's where we are. Um, I think um, uh, I think uh, hopefully you've learned uh, uh, you've you've learned something about Smart HQ service in this uh, training session. Um, you know we're going to keep making creating these training sessions um, to try to make sure that uh, one we keep you up to date with the newest features and also uh, make sure that we keep you up to date with um, some of the more obscure features that you may not use on every day, but can be very, very valuable in certain situations. So thank you for, for joining this session. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, our phone number, 502-714-2029. Uh, uh, we're always uh, happy to hear from you and always happy to help however we can, okay? So, um, and also, uh, we, obviously we're based at Appliance Park uh, in Building 5. If you wanna send us uh, gifts, uh, cards, whatever, we'd be happy to get them. And uh, wish, hope you have a wonderful uh, afternoon and uh, or morning, uh, depending on where you are. And uh, so thank you for joining. If there are any more uh, questions, you can shoot them to us over chat. But uh, I think at this point, we will we'll end the call. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for joining, especially uh, Oak Valley Appliance. Thank you for, for joining us. And uh, have, a, have a great morning. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.